was out uh, doing some push cards the other day in uh, Sullivan Fair, and a gentleman said, uh, what you doing out here? He saw my, my, it said St. Louis County Police Department on it. And I told him I'd lived here since I was 16. He said, well, we'll give you an honorable mention then. <laughs> so uh, so I, 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 I don't know if I'll be fully accepted, but I have been here since I was 16. Long and short uh, thing is, uh, uh, I got drafted in 1970, and if the Army, ever, for you people who have children want to go into the military, if they start asking you, do you like sleeping under the stars, do you like camping, you say no. I, I, I told him I didn't want to, I, did, I, I ended up in an infantry unit, a pathfinder unit for the next nine, nine years. <laughs> so if they ask you if you like camping, be sure and say no. So I stayed in the Army from 1970 until 1978, whereupon I got out of the Army. During that time there, I was stationed with the 82nd Airborne Division. Uh, I have over 200 parachute jumps. I've been literally all over the world. I was being selected for the Iranian rescue missions when Rocky Sickman, I'm sure you all know where he is, he lives just up the road from me, or he did anyway. And I got out of the Army because I didn't like the way President Carter was running things. So I got out of the Army and I became a St. Louis County policeman in, uh, in 1978, and I stayed there until the Ferguson riots, which I spent 32 days down there. During that time, I went back and I went into the Army Reserves in June 6, 1981, and I retired from them uh, in 2015. So I had a dual career between the military and, um, and the police service. My entire time with the police department was in North St. Louis County. My area of patrol included, if you are familiar with North County, uh, it's, in my area was Jennings, Pine Lawn, Wellston, Kenlock, Pagedale, and we were primarily responsible for the unincorporated areas, but if you know about St. Louis County, they do contract patrol for municipalities. Uh, I spent all my time on the street. I was a field training. I was a field training instructor with the police department. I rose to the rank from private all the way to command sergeant major in the United States Army. That's not sergeant major. That's command sergeant major. So there's two different things. And I spent all my times overseas. Out of my 37 and a half years approximately in the army, I think about half of that was active duty. In, uh, in the year 2000, I was in Bosnia, and we thought that we were getting ready to come home, but guess what, 9-11 happened. We got sent somewhere else. Long story short, the kid didn't come back till 204. That's, that's basically what it was. In the active duty, I became a drill sergeant, I became a tank commander, a cavalry scout, a pathfinder, and, and I ended my career with Special Operations Command of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I have a master's degree with two majors, one in law enforcement, no, excuse me, one in legal studies and international relations. My highest academy in the United States Army was, command, was Sergeant Majors Academy, and you are selected to go to that. Out of 967 people, I graduated 125 out of the class. My entire time was pretty much traveling around the world. I was attached to, uh, to the 10th PSYOP Battalion, and when we, was on, when we would go around the world, we would often meet with UN delegates and things of that sort, high commissioners, because we have a name for us, but they call us PSYOP people, and it means that we play with people's heads. Uh, I, was on, I, I retired after the uh, uh, Ferguson riots because I did not like the way the governor treated us. I did not like Claire McCaskill's statements, but I don't want to get in that because you don't want to hear that. Uh, my sons are either graduated from Washington High School out here or Borgia where they went. So I am, I do consider myself a, law, a lifelong resident of Franklin County, but I am not part of the, de the Sheriff's Department out here. I drove back and forth, I went through five cars in 36 years and eight months. I know exactly how far Ferguson is from where I live. Now, I was not a Ferguson policeman. People often get me confused with that. I work for St. Louis County Police Department. I was in the second district and that's North Central County where I spent my entire time at. Uh, been married, I've been married uh, 45 years, going into 46 years. I have a good amount of knowledge on me on my webpage, but my wife does not know everything because I would not make 46 years if I put it all in. <laughs> so I'm not about to start gate mouthing right now. <laughs> uh, I can tell you from the Ferguson riots, there has to be a very close relationship between, between EMS and police. I got on the scene of, of, uh, Steve, of Michael Brown's death in about a minute. And as soon as we got there, we started taking rifle fire. Now, I'm not going to go in too deep because you don't want to hear all about Ferguson. But I seen fire hoses cut. I seen firemen have to duck and dodge bullets. 
So there is a very intimate relationship be between us and them. Not, now I, I work with Normandy North, uh, uh, Northwest Ambulance and Community. I've never worked with anybody out here, obviously. But I've seen firemen get in and fight with us against dope temp drug users, meth users, all of it. So there has to be a very close relationship between the two. And a reluctant sheriff, I'm going I'm to I'm foster that a lot more. I would like to see y'all carry guns. I'm just going to tell you right out. That's just the way I feel about it. Because we're a team. There's no such thing as you and us. It's all, it's, we're all together. That's the way it has to be. The only time I got into it with the fireman is when he wouldn't move his truck because he was blocking my highway. <coughs> so we, 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 some high level people had to get into that one and settle out. Because <laughs> we went into police language and fire fire language, which I won't do here. You all know what that is. <laughs> but to, but there's, it's one thing. It's not two. It's, it's not separate, folks. We're joined at the hip together. We are good together. We have to have a relationship working together. One of the things I'm concerned about is I heard uh, uh, talk about this is adult abuse. I can tell you it's out there. Elected chair, I'm going to get I'm going to get up to my eyeballs in that. The elderly are being abused, and we have we can't allow that. So we have to get involved in that. There has to be special people that can do that though. Not everybody can investigate that. The young man don't want to. Some of these young men will not want to do that. So it takes somebody a bit older with some experience to get in there and talk to the elderly and see what's going on with dementia, Alzheimer's, and all that. We have to take a look at those things, and I will do so. Um, I love this county. I had ample opportunity to move St. Louis County, but I would not do it because I did not want to leave Franklin County, even though I'm just an honorable mention. You know, you'd think somebody 50, been here 50 years would be all right, but it ain't good to go yet. <laughs> Somebody talked about how this is a closed community. I think it was Tom over there. Yeah, it still is. <laughs> and I love it. I lived just down the road from Clearview School on Highway 8. Been there my entire life. And this is where I'm going to die. I'm not going nowhere. Neither is my family. I I'm in the great grandkids now. How am I doing on time like that? But uh, the fact of it is, us and firefighters were one. I love this community. And when elected sheriff, you can't, you can't fulfill what Gary Talkie's done. I can't do that. I'm not even going to try. That's just too bigger, too, too bigger moccasins for me to try to get into. But I can continue what what he has started. Will it be changes? Of course. You get a divorce, new husband, new wife comes in. They don't want to hear about the old guy. It's the only analogy I can give. You. I'm a soldier, folks, and, uh, and, and I'm a police officer. I'm not a politician. I I'm just letting it roll. Um, if you have any questions, I'll take them now. Sir? What do you know about funding and how are you going to continue to fund the sheriff's office? Well, me and Monty are going to argue about that at the county commission, I'm sure. I'm going to get the first thing, the first thing I would do is, is, is get the budget for the department, and I will bring in all the, the top commanders in, and we're going to go through it item by item, and I'm going to find out where the money's going, what it's doing. The thing that I see right now with the sheriff's department is we've got, we have got to improve the, uh, uh, the facility. Then I want to take a look at technology to bring in. And my thing, I'm going to be right up front with pay raises. Me and the county commission on final pay raises and benefits for, for the deputies. They're, they're, they're going to see a side of me they're not going to like. Right now you're seeing the nice side. Because we're, we're going to argue about the budget. They're going to give me what I want. I'm going to take them out wine and dine or do what I need to do, but we're going to talk about that budget. Well, is there and other avenues besides the county commission? Do I? Is there other avenues besides the county? Well, commission? first off, I'm going to start meeting. There's funding other, other avenues. I'm not going to go for federal funding if that's what you're getting at. Because too many streams, and I'm adamantly opposed to that. If the taxpayers want it, the taxpayers are supported. I know for a fact if you start getting in bed with the feds, they will control your department. There's something out there called the, the Strong Cities Network. You should, might want to look at this Strong Cities Network. They are taking over police departments like St. Louis County. When, when they got sued by the DOJ because of Ferguson rights, they are now under mandates because they are in, they have been accepting federal funds from them. It's like schools. Schools accept that they got federal mandates. So no, I will not go to the federal government for money. If the taxpayers want it, they'll pay for it, but we won't do it. It's that simple. I do believe in countywide task force. We, we, as you all know, and, and Detective Jason Gilmer knows about that, and Detective Pell, you know, Lieutenant Pell knows far more about that than I do. I do believe in working together as a community in law enforcement. I would meet with all the chiefs of police, and we're going to sit down and have a talk 
on emergency preparedness. We're going to talk about the crime because I'm not up on the crime as these two gentlemen are here. But give me 30 days and I will be there. There's nothing I won't know about that sheriff's department. What's your opinion on having communications in uh, the sheriff's department or an independent communication center? I don't like that. Uh, now we have something called the Sheriff's Net, so there's multiple communications that are already. Are you talking about the 911 Commission system? No, or I'm what? talking about the way the county currently set up with communications, with where they hand everything's in the sheriff's office. A lot of us fire and EMS are dispatched through that agency. How would you handle that? Personally, I'd like to see the fire department have their own dispatch system. Personally, that's what I would like to see. How, would, that, you how would you fund that? Well, we'd have to go to the taxpayers for that and each, each protective district, I'm assuming. Again, I don't know how the sheriff's department operates right now, so I, I can't answer that question for you. But if that's the way that it is, then I would do everything I could to improve the system to make sure that they're getting adequate communication. We do have to be 9-11 com com uh, communications up to date, and I believe that we just came online with that from when I read the paper, where the communication system has been, uh, has been updated and is complete now, if I'm, if I'm correct on that. That's outdated by years. It is? Well, then I will have to tackle that when I get in there. Again, I don't know the intricate details like these two gentlemen know of the Sheriff's Department because I don't work there. So I can't answer your questions on internal operations right now. So, so you prefer not to be in charge of fire and missed dispatching then? I guess that's why I'm here. No, I would prefer not to Sheriff's Department. I would prefer them to have their own because the system gives us too much on the radio. Unless you're, unless you're talking about setting up separate frequencies for them, then, then, then I would be happy with that. But I would have to meet with the fire chiefs to go through all that and see which is the best course of action. For me to walk in there and say, this is the way it's gonna be with my ignorance of how it's working right now would, would not be good leadership. And there's a difference between being a leader and being a manager. A manager wants to maintain what they got. A leader is a manager who wants to look at every, all the different aspects. So, so I would have to meet with the fire chief and see what's, what do they want? Because they're the ones gonna work with the system. I can tell you right now, it's in North St. Louis County, I handled 15 to 20 radio calls every day. There were assaults, robberies, burglaries, domestic violence. If I wanted the fire come on there, I changed it. Because I'm hearing too much of it. So I would have to meet with them to find out uh, what's the best course of action. <coughs> so I'd have an open mind on it. One other thing, what's your thoughts on the possibility of consolidation of um, some of the smaller police departments possibly being contracted? Chair take over contracting, doing the, the I'm, I'm very much in favor of that. Now, I, I think they need to retain their, their political body. I think they need to retain their self-governability. But for them, but they are county residents, and they're paying county tax, and they are just as, they should have the same level of protection as everybody else. That said, by state law, depending on what class you are, first, second, or third, or fourth class, you are required by law to have certain adequate police protection. If you don't, the sheriff can go in there and say, you're no longer a department. And I would do that. But I would be in favor of contract control with them. Everybody in this county is due sheriff's protection, whether they like it or not. It's the way it is. Incidentally, the sheriff is a chief law enforcement officer of the county, and the word posse comitatus means the power of the county. The sheriff is over everybody else. The St. Louis County Police Department could walk into any municipality, and we've done that numerous times, if there is a breakdown in law enforcement. We can't have that in Franklin County. So I would work with those municipalities to see what their, what their desires are. But their citizens are gonna have adequate police protection because I'm gonna provide it one way or the other. It's gonna happen. I'm used to talking to soldiers. I'm not used to talking to civilians. Command Sergeant Major don't have to talk to civilians. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all in this together, folks. Wife, let me know my 15 minutes. Right? We're all in this together. There ain't them against us. We're going to have to work with each other because I, uh, these two gentlemen will tell you, it's one. We are not against you and you for us. We have to work together with our citizens to get input so we know where crime is at. We don't. It's not us against them. I've, I've learned that the hard way, North County, and, and I don't want to see any <coughs> that kind of stuff come out here. So we are in this together. This is our county. I am telling you from the bottom of my heart, you do not want the governor to come in or some federal agent to come in and say, this is the way it's gonna be. I will not allow that. I give you my word on that. I'm a combat veteran. I mean exactly what I say. It, there will be no federal overreach in this county. It will not happen. 
Your Tenth Amendment rights, your Fourth Amendment, your Bill of Rights will be protected. I've seen dictatorships. It won't happen here. Yes, ma'am. What happened was, I, I was in first, and uh, the real story behind the scene, I did not know that you'd all want to hear about this, I was accused of hitting Don Lemon. And I was brought into internal affairs 24 hours later, I was a civilian. And I told him in there, if I would have hit Don Lemon, he wouldn't have got back up, so I'm, I'm, I'm apparently innocent. And that's the facts. I wasn't going to put up with it. I'm not going to sit there and allow people to burn buildings down. White people were being drug out of their car, they were being assaulted, we were not allowed to file police reports. We were being shot at. We were having human waste thrown on us. Our police cars were being shot to pieces. And I get some trumped up charge, I hit Don Lemon, that's ridiculous. So I retired. Didn't have to. One day I was suspended, next day I wasn't suspended. One day I was working, next day I wasn't working. I got tired of being a yo-yo, so I retired. And you can check with the county police on that and they will verify that. Any other questions? Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. You know, we've been, been here for about an hour and a half. Is everybody good? Or you want, you want to get up, take a five minute, get up and stretch break? or?